You've probably seen it in your favorite pre-workout, but what does beta-alanine actually do? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin and today we're going to talk about one of the most common ingredients in pre-workout mixes, beta-alanine. What it is, how it works, what it's good for, and how much is effective. As always, I want to point out that I'm not telling you that you need to take beta-alanine or any supplements for that matter. But I do want to explain what effect it might have and you can use that information to help you make more informed choices. Let's get started. Just so you know, I got a lot of the information from this video from a great review paper by Trex Lertal, so go check it out in the references if you want to geek out. So before we actually speak about beta-alanine, we need to understand a little exercise metabolism. When we exercise intensely, we need to produce ATP in our muscles to fuel that movement, something I've spoken about a lot before in my creatine videos, so check those out later. Making ATP, and especially making a lot of it in a short amount of time, also causes the buildup of some metabolic byproducts. And one of those metabolites is lactic acid, or specifically the hydrogen ions that are produced with it. When these hydrogen ions build up in the muscle, they cause the burn that people associate with exercise. Basically, the burn happens when our muscles become a little more acidic, and this can actually limit our muscles' performance and make it harder to continue exercising. Now, our body has a few systems to help counteract this, and one of those is by using carnosine, which acts as a pH buffer. If any of you remember from high school chemistry, a buffer is a substance that can help to resist changes in pH. So basically, carnosine can help stop our muscles from becoming too acidic, which should help improve performance and allow us to continue exercising a little bit longer. Another way carnosine might help improve performance is by acting as an antioxidant that can help scavenge free radicals produced in the muscles during exercise. So at this point, you're probably saying, I thought this video was about beta-alanine. What's all this talk about carnosine? Trust me, I'm getting to it. You see, we can make carnosine in our bodies by combining the amino acids histidine and yes, you guessed it, beta-alanine. Like I said, we produce it in our bodies and can also get it directly from the foods that we eat, like meat, poultry and seafood. This is also why vegetarians who don't eat meat and older people who tend to eat less meat have lower levels of carnosine in their muscles. This also means that these are groups of people that could potentially benefit even more from taking beta-alanine. You see, supplementing with beta-alanine helps to increase carnosine synthesis and leads to higher carnosine levels in the muscles. In fact, supplementing with enough beta-alanine for long enough, for example 10 weeks, can lead to an 80% increase in muscle carnosine levels. If you've ever taken a pre-workout, there's a good chance that you've noticed that your skin, especially the skin on your face, neck and ears, feels really weird and tingly. This effect is called paresthesia and is a very common side effect from taking a single big dose of beta-alanine. It's perfectly normal and perfectly harmless too, and usually disappears within an hour. You can actually reduce the effect of paresthesia by taking a timed release form of beta-alanine, which will release more slowly into your bloodstream or taking smaller doses. So that's what you feel when you take beta-alanine, but what actually happens in terms of performance when you take it? Well, if an athlete takes the correct dose of beta-alanine, and we'll get to that in a minute, they should see an improvement in high intensity anaerobic activities that last longer than 60 seconds, but especially those that last between two and four minutes. A good example of this is time to exhaustion or TTE trials. This is where you get an athlete to do a very high intensity activity like running, swimming or cycling at or above their maximal power output until they just can't do it anymore. Remember, these are the kind of high intensity activities that would lead to a buildup of hydrogen ions that cause serious muscle burn, which is where a buffer like beta-alanine comes in handy. Beta-alanine has been shown to increase time to exhaustion by around 10 to 20% in these TTE trials that last between two and four minutes. Interestingly, there doesn't seem to be an effect of beta-alanine on very short duration, high intensity activities that last under 60 seconds. And this is probably because that's not enough time for hydrogen ions to build up and cause problems for muscle function. Beta-alanine might also be useful for aerobic activities of under 25 minutes, such as running and cycling. Again, by increasing time to exhaustion. Some research has even shown that beta-alanine supplementation may help shave a few seconds off time trial events like 2000 meter rowing trials. While a few seconds might not sound like much, for competitive athletes it could mean the difference between a win and a loss. Now, I briefly mentioned that you have to take the right dose of beta-alanine to get the effect. 
So what is the correct dose? Well, if you remember my creatine videos, I explained that to get the best effects of creatine, you need to supplement it daily to help build up the level of creatine in your muscle. It doesn't have any instant or acute effects. Well, beta-alanine is similar. You have to build up the level of carnosine in your muscles by taking beta-alanine daily for an extended period of time. So, if the only beta-alanine you take is in a pre-workout once a week, it's not giving you any sports performance benefits, even if your face does feel so itchy it's gonna fall off. The correct dosage of beta-alanine seems to be about six grams per day for an extended period of time of at least two weeks, but preferably four weeks or more. Now, if you took six grams of beta-alanine all at once, you might get a serious dose of paresthesia. Not everyone wants to be scratching their face during their workout, so the recommendation is to divide the dose of beta-alanine into four even doses throughout the day. So in reality, that would look something like 1.5 grams each at breakfast, lunch, dinner, and one more at another point throughout the day. Supplementing with beta-alanine is by no means simple, and I hope you realize now why taking a single dose before hitting the gym is probably not gonna be doing a lot for you. And just because I know somebody is going to ask, after supplementing with beta-alanine for like three months, if you stop taking it, it can take another three to four months before your muscle carnosine levels return to their baseline. Now, there's one question I haven't answered yet, and that's whether beta-alanine is any good for building muscle and strength in the gym. Here's the thing, there's not as much research on beta-alanine in strength sports, and the research we do have suggests that it might help to increase training volume, meaning it might help you get a few more reps in resistance exercise, particularly with high rep sets. But, and it's a very, very big but, there is no evidence that shows that beta-alanine on its own leads to greater increases in strength or muscle size. So if you're hoping to improve your intense anaerobic or aerobic performance in sports like running, cycling, swimming, rowing, or similar sports, beta-alanine could be useful for helping to reduce fatigue. But on the other hand, if you're trying to get big and strong in the gym, beta-alanine might not be for you. Now, that said, Higher doses of beta-alanine might have effects for muscle growth, but we still don't have any research showing that. So until then, we can't say if it has any benefits for the bros. Just like anything in nutrition, if we don't have a clear amount of evidence showing its benefits, I'm not gonna be able to recommend it. So when it comes to beta-alanine and muscle gain, there isn't a clear effect. So it may not be for you. So did that clear everything up about beta-alanine? As always, if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.